Okay, we're looking for a short. What, what do we look for when we look for a short? Well, first of all, I want to point out to you that over here is the main fuse in for the entire unit. The motors, if they short, will blow this fuse over here. But it's the main fuse to the entire unit. The fuse which I have jumpered out at this point, it is on my workbench and I'm taking very good care of monitoring when to shut this unit down. This is not what you do. This is not a permanent fix. This is a slow blow fuse. A slow blow fuse needs to be replaced in this position. As I said in my previous video, I'm going to install a fuse holder here so that the owner can get to this fuse a little easier than having to disassemble the unit to get to it. Not recommended but for the testing purposes I'm doing here, I want a one quick check. I'm going to short this. I have a fast blow fuse here. I energize the unit. The unit shuts down. Again, the un unit has been submerged under water. The owner's place flooded. So what could be wrong? Well, the carbon composition resistors are not suspect. If they were to fail, and they do because they either are carrying too much wattage, which means too much voltage, too much current. They would open up like a hot dog on a barbecue. They would crack and peel, and it actually opens it up as a switch open. So that's not the problem. All these carbon composition resistors, which are original to the unit, are in good shape. I know that when this is not jumpered, that the relay works. The relay for the motors is intact, the fast slow. These capacitors don't look overheated. This one doesn't look overheated. This is the CAN capacitor on the power supply. It looks like it's in good shape. Looks are deceiving. However, okay, here are the, the sandbox resistors. Uh, that you typically see. Here's R15, which is a cylindrical uh, resistor, which you'll see here. And I've shown that to you. Now then, what could be shorted? If these capacitors on the phase splitter short, it goes from a voltage connection to a voltage current connection. Not necessarily a bad thing. There are amplifiers that actually do not have that in there. This is not one of those. This is not this design. This is a phase splitter. But if it were to short, you would take 110 volts to this grid, to that cathode. 110 volts then goes to the output side of the output transformer, connects to the center tap, and it will, it should, that should be it. it. It should not blow the fuse because we still have a capacitor here that doesn't allow it to go to short the ground. However, what concerns me more, and they look like they're in, they're in good shape, this capacitor, C9, is rated for 200 volts. It is a concern, I'm sorry, 50 volts, 200 uh, mu F. If it shorts, I'm gonna put 25 volts right to ground that will back up this circuit and possibly blow the slow blow fuse. The other capacitor that concerns me is the CAN capacitor. If any of these sections short, it will then send 400 volts right to ground below the fuse. Now then, this was underwater, and the way the, can, the construction of the CAN capacitor is, water can seep through the lugs into the unit. And it could be that even though the owner started up the unit after drying it out for a couple weeks, there was enough residual water in there that as it's heated up a little bit, it failed the dielectric uh, membranes inside, shorted, and it's blowing the fuse. The other thing that's of more immediate concern is this capacitor. Again, that's C9, and it is, it's got this charred look to it. The pack, this was rotated down and resting actually on the chassis and there's a charred, a uh, bit of charred look here. So I'm suspecting 
that it broke through and this bit of metal is exposed here. There's normally a shellac uh, or lacquer finish. I have aluminum uh, exposed right here. If it's, so you can see the shellac is gone. That if the voltage breaks through the dielectric, it goes to chassis, chassis goes to ground, blows the fuse, problem solved. How to check for this? Well, what I'm going to, have to do is, in the case of any capacitor, I'm going to have to unsolder the leads and then put it on test instrument that checks for capacitance and also check for shorting. If that's it, easy fix. If it's a can capacitor, again, some extra care with this is going to need to be taken. Although this unit's been down for a while and the voltage has bled off, you always check for the voltage here. Voltage on this capacitor is 420 volts DC, not to be messed with. So we will, I will uh, test for voltage first, get a rather large resistor like this to bleed it down if necessary. I will send it to ground, bleed it down, and then once it's bled off, I will immediately within the hour is to check for capacitance across each of the can sections and check for shorting. Now, the reason I said check it within the hour is that when a capacitor of this size is left alone, enough static charge uh, is picked up and it will re-energize. Uh, just a few volts isn't the problem, but a few volts and just a tiny bit of current that may still be residual in this can capacitor and you put your fingers across the lugs will set you back. That is very dangerous. So we take it out, we check it, we safe it off, generally ground it out, put it back in the circuit if it's good. So that's what I'm going to do to check this unit out. Hopefully this is the shorting capacitor. And if not, then we'll go to plan B and check this. If that doesn't uh, res result in determining that that's where the short is, then I will have to disconnect each of the other capacitors one by one. Again, check for rating, check for short, even with this. So rather simple unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Normal capacitors in the can capacitors, what we're going to check for. If that doesn't result in anything, then we'll disconnect our B plus off the power transformer and start looking for a short here because that's where the fuse is protecting is this transformer. I think it would be highly unlikely that this is shorted, but I'm banking here, but the short could still be there. We'll find that out here in just a few moments. The first thing I did was to verify my voltages were zero, and then I unsoldered the filament wire and the high voltage wire to check the power transformer. When I re-energize the unit, the filament, trans the filament wire heater wires are running 6.7 VAC. The high voltage winding on the power transformer is reading 355 volts. I'm happy with that. So I am assuming that the other transformers are in good shape also. The other caps look fine. This cap is a little bit suspect, as I've said, and I want to test it. So it's a 200 microfarad capacitor that goes to R15. And I'm going to use a Radio Shack tester because that's what most folks have. And I realize it only goes up to 40 microfarad. And then you're saying, well, if that's 200 and it only reads to 40, what do you do? Well, that's easy enough to do. First of all, what I did was get another capacitor, and this is 10 microfarad. So I take a reading on the 10 microfarad, and it reads 12.3 microfarad. So 12.3 plus 200 in series should read around 11.6 microfarad if this is, in fact, very close to and still functional to. Uh, 200 microfarad. So let me put it into series. We'll measure it. I calculate 11.6, I get 11.8. 
So the 200 is somewhat off, but the capacitor is still good. So checks out. There's a shortcut in case you need to read a value of a, a capacitor that's well above the range of, say, your, your volt ohm meter. Now then, let's move on to the power cap. So I'm going to hook the negative lead to one of the uh, grounding lugs. There's a grounding lug here, here, and here. The power cap is 30 microfarads, 30 microfarads, 30 microfarads, 10 microfarads. I unsoldered the high voltage power line and the output transformer line from the power cap. The others are in circuit somewhere. If I have a problem with the reading, then I would have to unsolder the rest of the, the lugs. But otherwise, these are shorting through the the transformers and I will not get an adequate reading. So let's take a look at the first lug that goes to the output transformer, making sure I get a good connection and overflow condition. It's shorted out is of no, it's not good. Let's go look at the power side where the high voltage winding would come in, getting a good connection. It's also shorted, so we know two of them are bad. Let's go look at the other cap. Yeah, make sure I get a good connection. It says it's 34. The can's supposed to be rated for 30. That's within 20% tolerance bother some people that the impreciseness of some of this these components I knew, do need to get a good connection you know, I have it there we go it's supposed to be 10 I get 15.8 so two sections of the can are okay the other two sections are definitely shorted out, which is why I keep blowing a, the slow blow fuse, which is mounted here. So what I'm going to do, it costs a whopping $37 to go buy a new uh, can capacitor for this unit. I will install it. I'll retest the voltages again. And then if I get voltage and I have my slow blow fuse uh, re inserted again I'm gonna put a holder either here or here for that fuse then I can do the voltage check and I'll share those with you in the next video thanks for watching